Yes, please. Good evening. So did you look at the questions? Hmm? Generally, how did you feel? Approachable. You are becoming more comfortable with the subject. Today we'll take up the questions and I'll briefly talk about these questions with you. So the topic is sociology as a science. See, the first question which appeared in 22, that is, how does a researcher achieve objectivity in interpretive research? This I am not taking right now because I have not yet discussed interpretive research. That is a part of different theoretical strands in research, the topic which I said I will take up after thinker. So we are leaving out this question for the time being. Then another question last year. 22, was difference between information and data in social sciences subtle comment. That there is very little difference between information and social science. This point I have discussed with you, I will quickly repeat it, that first thing you should do is what is meant by information and what is meant by data. This is what you have to write. The answer has to be in only 150 words. So, data refers to raw facts, facts as they are observed, while information re refers to knowledge. When data is arranged according to a viewpoint, This viewpoint is provided by the hypothesis. So when we look at the facts from a certain point of view, it gives rise to information. So data is a precondition for information to be there. But data by itself is not information. Information is data viewed in interconnectedness. So this is the subtle difference between data and information. Science begins with collection of data and tries to move towards information. And when this information gets tested again and again and proved, it gives rise to generalization. Then next question, what are the shortfalls of positivist philosophy that gave rise to non-positivist methods of studying social reality? This I think is straight from the lecture. He says, what are the limit? Shortfall means limitation of positivist philosophy that gave rise to non positivist approach. Now, what is positivism? That is what first thing. See, whenever you have a question and there are concepts in, in that statement of the question, explain the meaning of these concepts first. So, what is positivism? And what are the assumptions of the positivist philosophy that we have discussed? Then what are its limitations? Short false means limitation. So what are the limitations of positivist philosophy? And because of those limitations, there was non-positivist approach. So two kinds of limitations we have seen. One limitation is that you cannot practice positivist approach in sociology. Experimentation is not possible, quantification is a problem, objectivity is a problem, generalization. Then so all this. Then positivism tends to be partial by very nature because positivism believes that reality exists out there 
and is observable so what happens is they restrict themselves only to observable aspects of reality ignore those aspect of reality which are vital but not observable like meanings motives choices this is what non positivists talk about neo kantians phenomenologists ethno methodologists so these are the limitations because of which they say we should have a non positivist approach in which we try to interpret the meanings non positivists are an interpretive sociology they see sociology as an interpretive discipline so these limitations are however not a methodological failure but these limitations are inher inherent in subject matter and social positivist approach remains valid even today at in a macro level analysis non positivist approaches are predominantly micro sociological approaches that's all then next question that i would not discuss because ethno methodology we have yet to talk about so when we have covered those different theoretical stands we will come back to this question then next question 2021 how far are sociologists justified in using positivist approach to understand social reality what is positivist approach what are the basic assumptions of the positivist approach who are the important people who have used positivist approach what are the advantages of positivist approach but it is not wholly justified it is justified for a macro level analysis but in micro level sociological research since positivist approach is unable to discover the meanings motives and choices and some of the assumptions of the positivists are questioned by the non positivists and that is why it is not fully suitable in micro sociological inquiry that's all yes durkheim study of suicide is a positivist study i gave you the example and when i take up durkheim next week so i'll be describing in detail how he conducted the positivist study that you will have an illustration example that this is how it was done and it had its merits it is not altogether useless but it has its limitations also that also we will tell you when i take up one limitation i have already discussed atkinson's attack on study of suicide all right like the authenticity of data the data are not objective facts and so on then there are other criticisms also that also we'll take up hmm? see atkinson study is a contemporary study only atkinson did not study in the 19th century atkinson study is a recent study and there are other studies of you know 1980s 1990s which i'll be telling you when i take up durkheim study of suicide in detail then is sociology a value free science so what do you have to do you have to first tell what is meant by being value free what are values and what is the meaning of value free then what are the advantages of being value free that it is a cherished goal give illustrations that durkheim i gave you example yesterday durkheim said treat social facts as things weber said value neutrality all that blah blah so that shows value freedom is desirable but as gunnar middel said it is impracticable it is a myth it cannot be achieved in practice there are various reasons why it fails so i told you yesterday choice of topic of research formulation of hypothesis ideological orientation field limitations limitations of the techniques of data collection for all these reasons therefore value free sociology is very elusive goal 
all that we can do is minimize the value contamination reduce it but we cannot eliminate subjectivity that's all then methodology is a system of rules principles and procedures which form scientific investigation come on you to agree with it yes this is what methodology is that there are certain rules given illustration positivist approach taking the example of positivist approach what are the basic rules and what are the principles according to which research has to be carried out you will know these details further when i take up research methodology that you will get examples to cite in your answer then phenomenological perspective in sociology rejects many assumptions of positivism very simple first tell me first write down what is positivism what are the assumptions of positivism and what assumptions are rejected or questioned by phenomenologists yesterday i told you all that they said reality there is no objective existence of reality that it is not an objective fact existing out there that social reality is socially constructed by the meanings and choices which people have and secondly these meanings are not observable positivists believe that social reality can be known by observation but these meanings are not observable they can only be interpreted and therefore objectivity is not achievable so generalizations are not possible there is no causal explanation that you can provide all that you can do is identify the meanings interpret the meanings and see how people classify their world into different categories based on those common sense meanings example is atkinson's view about coroner or sikorel's view about the police in america and so on and that's all then is non positivistic methodology scientific illustrate what does the question mean it says non positivist neo kantian phenomenologists ethno methodologists feminists they are all non positivists is their approach scientific so first write down what is scientific approach now the word science itself is prone to different open to different interpretation one view of science is positive science all right now positive science has certain assumptions these assumptions are not fulfilled and rejected by non positivist so non positivist approach is not scientific if we interpret science as a positive science but if we take a broad meaning of science that anything systematic and methodical so even non positivists follow certain methods right now you don't know because i have not discussed the methods of phenomenology and ethnomethodology but when i have discussed that different research theoretical strands in research you will know those methods what are the methods followed so even non positivist methodology is methodical systematic and it tries to rely on observable facts to the extent possible so it is scientific but science it is scientific as a social science because these limitations are inherent in the subject matter of sociology that is human being so it is scientific as a social science it is not scientific as a positive science that's all then question number 10 does scientific method make sociology a science illustrate your answer with durkheim's method now that durkheim's method i have not yet discussed with you that you will know when i take up emil durkheim we'll have a full lecture on methodology only but briefly i can tell you the answer to the question he says does scientific method make sociology a science so what is scientific method 
if we interpret science as a positive science, that is what Durkheim did. So, these are the steps of scientific method, that you know what are the steps of scientific method. Now, then we try to apply these steps to scientific sociological research. We find that there are numerous limitations, that experimentation cannot be conducted, that quantification is possible to a very limited degree, only statistical data can be connected, or we can talk about in terms of less and more but we cannot talk, precisely quantify social reality. So, like that, so these are the limitations of scientific method. Durkheim tried to use this in his study of suicide, but that study has been criticized. Those criticisms, I have given you one criticism of Atkinson, there are other criticisms also, which I will give you when I take up Durkheim's study of suicide. So, you will incorporate all those points here, that though Durkheim tried to apply positivist approach, but his positivist approach is subject to such criticism, because these are the limitations of sociology as a positive science. Therefore, sociology should be considered as a social science. It cannot be modeled like physics, because subject matter of sociology is fundamentally different. It is human beings, thinking human beings. Physical objects do not think, they do not have consciousness. So, because of that, it is a science, but a social science, not a positive science. Or not only a positive science, you can say. Even now, positive science methods are relevant for a macro level inquiry. Then, the next is something which we have not yet covered, research design. That we will cover when we take up research methods. Then, next is also ethnomethodological and phenomenological. That also we will take up later. Then, question number 13. Basic postulates of positivism and post positivism. We have discussed both. We have discussed positivism and then post positivism as an attempt to modify positivism, try to reconcile positivist approach with non positivist approach. So, I have told you the points of post positivism. That is all that you have to write. Then, next question, elaborate the main teenage of interpretive perspective that we have not done as yet. What is value free sociology? This question has been repeated dozens of times. Then, question number 16, describe the basic postulate of scientific method. How far these are followed in sociological research? We have already discussed the limitations that they try to follow it, but not fully. Limited degree, they are able to follow it. Experimentation is not possible. Quantification is possible to a limited degree. Generalizations are limited generalizations, which only indicate a trend or a tendency. Objectivity is not possible. All those, these are the limitations in sociology. Is sociology a science? Give reason for your answer. Now, here again you will say, first give the definition of science. Then you will say, however, science has been interpreted in two ways. One, as a positive science. When science is modeled strictly on the same lines as physical and natural sciences like physics and biology. That is one view of science. And if we take that view of science, then there are limitations. That sociology is only partly successful in being a science if we adopt that positivistic view of science. And then this positivistic view is also criticized because it totally ignores the subjective dimension, the meanings, motives and all that. Therefore, 
sociology is not fully a science as a positive science but if we take you write down like that if we interpret science in a broader sense that an inquiry which follows definite methods which is methodical and these limitations which we have talked about are because of the very character of the subject matter they are inherent in subject matter sociologists cannot change the subject matter so it is a science because it is methodical albeit a social science sociology is a social science that's how you conclude now discuss the relevance of historical method in the study of society there is no such thing as historical method i am going to talk about it today when i start with the new topic this term was popularized by the founder of sociology august comte who popularized the term positivism now what is historical method historical method is a method of empirical research in which you rely on historical evidence you take data from the past so historical method is what what is the question he says uh, discuss the relevance so it is relevant because without using the historical method you can't explain change when you have to explain change how the society in the past changed into the present one the only, we cannot directly observe the past so the only way we can know about the past is through historical data so when we rely on historic historical data and apply comparative method to explain change from past to the present that is historical method so it is very relevant for explanation of social change then non positivist methodology is essential for understanding human behavior yes see sociology began as a positivist approach it tried to apply the methods of physical and natural sciences but in the process they did not care to understand when how do we understand understand at the level of meanings positivist approach is restricted only listen to this carefully discovering patterns of interconnection that much can be done but understanding this you can give an example from suicide that durkheim talked about suicide rates he did not care to understand how different people what were the motivations for them to commit suicide if you take an example of marilyn munro in america from time and again they keep writing books on marilyn munro's suicide they try to understand that she was at the peak of her career so much popular so wealthy though she had lot of broken marriages suddenly she committed suicide so we need to understand it for durkheim it is only a data in the percentage that such a rate of suicide Durkheim did not try to understand why she committed suicide. What were the personal reasons for committing suicide? So non-positivist approach is important there. We have to interpret the meanings, the motives, and in the light of those meanings and motives, we have to understand. That's all. So non-positivist approach tries to understand. positivist approach tries to discover only patterns of interconnection you will have a better idea on this understanding point when i take up durkheim's criticism when we discuss the study of suicide by durkheim and his the criticism of durkheim that how there are different dimensions to suicide not all suicide he looked into social meanings that if you are from a group having lack of unity you commit suicide but different people may be committing suicide for different reasons i gave you an example the other day that broken family say divorce 
so if a lady commits suicide after divorce durkim would say it is because of lack of unity but it may not be she may be quite happy after the divorce because the marriage was a very um, troublesome marriage so it is not uh, the loneliness it may be suppose she undergoes financial hardship and then she commits suicide so what is the real motive which made her commit suicide that point is ignored by durkin he doesn't probe into that he doesn't understand non positivist approach tries to understand then how is objectivity different from value neutrality only yesterday we talked about it then examine critically examine positivist approach in sociological studies what is positivist approach what are its limitations what are all that we have discussed then next question is about interpretive sociology which we have yet to discuss so he says straight question from the syllabus fact value and objectivity what are facts what are values what are objectivity how fact and values are connected to objectivity their objectivity demands fact and values ki should be kept separate all right that values should not contaminate facts then you can say how were not everyone accepts this point goldener and others they say we must have values critical sociologists feminists they all say that the values must also be taken into account at least universal human values as i gave you the example that respect for human life so you must condemn suppose a tribe practices cannibalism you must condemn it because of respect for human life respect for human freedom like that so not everyone believes that total objectivity should be maintained certain basic universal values must be adhered to by the sociologists they cite the example of karl marx you will see how karl marx was deeply committed to his values and as a result he was able to produce a new insight to understand human society so values are good values are not bad it is like that surf says dag acche hain so values are also good then write short on short note on fact value keeping perspective sociological perspective in mind same now this serendipity we is not yet discussed it's a part of research methodology when i take up research methodology i'll take up serendipity non idealist neo idealist neo idealist means neo kantian and symbolic interactions are critical of positivism how are they critical of positivism same issue of meanings motives and choices write short note on problem of objectivity role of values in sociological inquiry that also we discussed yesterday area of value relevance and area of value neutrality so values are relevant to the extent of the area of value relevance but at the same time we should also be value neutral and then you have to say criticism of value neutrality by goldner and others that some universal values are desirable that we should have value committed research okay. 30th question sociology as a science so rest you can see for yourself if there is any other question or doubt that you have you can ask me next week when we meet on monday i have discussed 30 questions so you you do feel comfortable you are able to understand and you will be able to handle questions now so far i am not yet talking about how to write answers i am only looking at the meaning of the question and the content that is needed 
later on after covering some more syllabus then i'll discuss how to approach the answer how the answer should be structured answer should be planned so this is about the question discussion now i have discussed with you emergence of sociology science and how far scientific approach is relevant in sociology and the positivist approach and the limitations of the positivist approach and then i have discussed with you the problem of objective this is all we have talked about now i'll move on to thinkers as i said thinkers constitute the backbone of the first paper and even of the second paper now as per the syllabus there are only six thinkers but partly to understand those six thinkers properly and sometimes the upsc is not faithful to the syllabus they have prescribed they shoot questions from the other thinkers which are not mentioned in the syllabus to so safeguard against that possibility i'll take many more thinkers than those six thinkers in the class only thing is the thinkers which are not in the syllabus i'll discuss them briefly thinkers which are part of the syllabus i'll take up a very detailed discussion of so we should begin with the first thinker the man who is considered to be the founder of sociology the father of sociology who coined this word sociology so that is august comte august com now before i start i like to tell you the structure of the lecture how i am going to talk about the thinkers that we will structure it in a particular way so that it is convenient for you to understand and secondly sometimes even for answering questions this structuring would be helpful i'll tell you how so what is going to be the structure of our lecture first i'll talk about the background now in the background a very brief biographical sketch then i'll talk about the social condition and also talk about the intellectual influences see i'll my idea is to help you understand how his thinking was shaped so a person's thinking is a product partly of the life experience that one goes through secondly of the social environment in which he or she is living and thirdly what are the intellectual influences that means what are the other ideas of other people that the person has been influenced by intellectual influence so all these three things constitute the background so first i'll talk about the background briefly then secondly as we discussed the other day that every science has to begin with certain assumption the perspective it so happened unlike physics or biology where we have common perspectives they have paradigms sociology doesn't have a paradigm 
such assumptions which are universally valid because different people think differently about society so we only have perspectives and by perspectives what i mean is the basic assumptions with which the sociologist starts that would shape his subsequent activity so the perspective so then i'll talk about the thinker's perspective and based on the perspective thinker's view of the subject matter that how does he or she define the society which they want to study then based on the way you define the subject matter you adopt the methodology so then i'll talk about the methodology adopted by the thinker and suppose somebody is giving a lecture how should one walk that's a methodology then one should demonstrate it also by taking a few steps himself all right application of the methodology this is what i call studies that how did they apply the methodology all right and then in the end critical evaluation critical evaluation so we'll beat him up first we'll give the devil is due then take him to task the limitations because often in the upsc answers you have to adopt the critical stance so this is my framework it is in this framework i am going to discuss all the thinkers now there will be one small problem not everyone has done his job well the thinkers we talk about they did not satisfy all the condition so there we are helpless so we will identify that failure and leave it at that so now i start with august com <coughs> actually <coughs> actually there is a debate also in sociology as to whether august comte was the founder real father of sociology or somebody else some people say it was not august comte it was august comte's employer under whom he started his career saint simo he was the founder because many of the ideas which august comte later on developed originated in saint simo but that's only a matter of debate for practical purposes saint simo did not give a proper shape to his work it was august com even if he was influenced by saint simo fine we'll include that in intellectual influence so august com was born in france in 1798 now when i say his date of birth or year of birth my purpose is to locate him in time what kind of society he lived in that is why i am interested in the year significance of year is that and he was born in a catholic family roman catholic was roman catholicism was their religion that's uh, sect of christianity 
so and his father was a royalist a strong supporter of monarchy now august comte right from the childhood was a brilliant child extremely good in studies but a very difficult person to get along with so much so that he did not even get along with his parents so at the age of 16 he passed the competitive examination to join an institute in france at that time called ecole polytechnique it was something like the present day iit engineering institute and even there he remained very you know you can say a brilliant recognized as a brilliant student but even there he remained a problem as far as social relations are concerned now that was in 1814 two years later there developed a dispute between the government and the faculty of the ecol ecol e c o l e ecol in french means school so engineering school so the dispute was about what kind of training should be given to the students in the ecol should they also be given military training or it should be pure engineering like that so the institute was closed for some time comp decided to drop out at this stage when the institute reopened after few months he did not rejoin and he separated from his home also migrated to paris where he started surviving by giving tuitions in mathematics he was particularly good at mathematics then in a, a year later there was a famous philosopher at that time in france saint simon it is written as simon s i m o n but french name so it is pronounced as simon saint simon so he took up employment with saint simon as his secretary and also later on became collaborator his colleague now they went to went on working together for the next 7 years in 1822 they together published a pamphlet a small booklet that plan of scientific operations for reconstructing society yeah the title of that pamphlet was plan of scientific operations for reconstructing society that itself indicates on the lines which he was working on now that was written jointly and those who have pursued phd in the universities will know there is a practice of academic exploitation the guide will make you do all the work but when it is published guide will claim the major authorship he would be the first author that's how they try to exploit those who work under them as research scholars this is this was the issue which developed with saint simon also 
Sensibo said, I'll give you authorship in only 100 copies. The rest of them would be under my name only. While Com said, I have done so much of work. So they developed differences. Then they also developed differences on another issue that Sensimo was an old man and he started writing on solutions to the practical problems of France at that time. Kong said, no, this is not the right way. What should you do? As Comte was influenced by enlightenment thought, because it was during this time that he made a detailed study of enlightenment philosophers. So enlightenment thought emphasized that first we should create a science, discover knowledge, and then use that knowledge for social reconstruction. You remember that we talked about it when we were discussing emergence of sociology. So, Sinsimo was not doing it, he was directly making suggestions for reform without discovering the scientific knowledge. In the pamphlet also, if you look at the title, he has said, Plan of Scientific Operations for, social re for Reconstructing Society. That means, how to build the science of society. That is what the topic was. But Sinsimo did not follow that. So, for both these reasons, Comte fell out. And in 1824, two years after writing that pamphlet, they split. Of course, Saint Simo was old and in 25 he died. So then Comte was all to himself. This is when he married also. And Mentioning the fact of marriage was important because given his personality that marriage was a stormy affair, it did not, it remained a problematic marriage. Now, Comte now embarked on building the science of society for which he had argued in that pamphlet that was published in 1822. So, he wrote a book with the title, or he rather started writing a book with the title, Course of Positive Philosophy. First volume of that book was published in 1830. Now, one thing you may notice, actually he was concerned about science, but he is calling it philosophy, a special type of philosophy. What type? Positive philosophy. The reason being that at that time, there was no science of society. So, all knowledge about society was called philosophy because all enlightenment thinkers talked about, they presented their ideas as philosophical ideas. So, all knowledge about human society was called philosophy and that is why he also named this book as Course of Positive Philosophy. Then, he started also delivering public lectures where he tried to present his ideas. And in the beginning, it became very popular. Some of the many uh, renowned scholars, intellectuals of France, they came to attend his lectures. But unfortunately, because of various factors, he had a nervous breakdown and had to close down the lectures after delivering three lectures only. Now, it took him long to recover from nervous breakdown because psychiatry as a branch of medicine had not yet developed. So, slowly recovering, he continued working on his project of building the science of society 
and published six volumes. That work, the course of positive philosophy, was completed in six volume, and the sixth volume was published in eighteen forty two. By that time, he had lost all the popularity which he had gained in the beginning because of various reasons, including because of his personality, his arrogance. So he lost all intellectual admirers, scholarly admirers, and even his wife divorced him in eighteen forty-two. Now, as far as earning the livelihood is concerned, because he had not completed his education, so he was not given a proper job anywhere. He continued to work as a tutor, as an examiner, and other marginal academic jobs, somehow acting out a living. In fact, some of his support admirers also helped him financially to carry on. Now, when he was passing through these difficult times, he once, when he visited one of his admirer, he was invited for dinner. He came across. That gentleman's sister, who was a divorcee, but something magical happened. It was like Hindi movie Love at the First Sight, and he developed a very intimate relationship with her, though they never married. But his personal problem, mental problems, were solved. He felt a great sense of relief. Unfortunately, the relationship did not last long because shortly afterwards, the lady developed tuberculosis and died. But then, after that, Comte was a changed man, and from eighteen forty-eight onwards, he started working on. His second book, the course of positive politics, the course of positive politics. This was positive philosophy. Now the second book was positive politics. Here, he. Criticize all that he had done earlier. See, science is based on reason. He said reason is not enough. In fact, he himself wrote that this intellectual work that I am doing, it's a very poor substitute of emotional loneliness that I experience. So he said, love is the solution to all human problems. And he said, "We have to create an attitude of love among humans. This is what is called altruism. Altruism is loving others." So now he embarked on the new project of creating a new religion of humanity. He said that Christianity as a religion has failed. He rejected Christianity, as I told you. He did not believe in his parental religion of Roman Catholicism. He said Christianity as a religion has failed, but I will create a new religion, which he was to call a positive religion. Now, although it was claptrap, nonsensical, but since one of the years they asked that question in the exam, what is positive religion according to Com? So I have to talk about it. So I will discuss that also with you. Now that system of positive politics, the system of positive politics was published in eighteen fifty-four. 
and the level of arrogance you can see on the part of Com that he stopped reading others' ideas. He said, I want to maintain purity of my own mind, cerebral hygiene. My mind will get contaminated if I read others' ideas. And he started sending the copies of positive politics where he made all kinds of suggestions for social reform to the kings of Europe at that time that this is the blueprint, follow it, apply it in your country and your country would be free from all problems. So he became an object of ridicule, a laughing stock. And in 1857, after visiting the grave of the lady who, with whom he was in love, he died. So this is the brief biographical account of the person we call August Com. Then the social conditions. If you look at the social conditions, I said he was born in 1798. Now, as you are aware, 1789 was the time when there was French Revolution. And immediately after the French Revolution, one of the revolutionary leaders, he established what is called the reign of terror. His name was Robespierre, R-O-B-E-S-P-I-E-R-R-E, -E -R -R -E, Robespierre. Robespierre suspected others as his opponents and also the entire nobility, the aristocracy, they were slaughtered. He introduced the system of what is called guillotine. You must have read the word guillotine in the context of parliamentary debate. When you uh, pass a law without any debate or discussion, it's called guillotine. So actually, guillotine was a way of beheading people. They'll make a person lie and a heavy blade will fall here and the head would be severed from the body. That machine was called guillotine. So he introduced guillotine and killed thousands of people in France. So that was called the reign of terror. So immediately after the revolution, there was a reign of terror. Then, of course, finally, there was a revolt against Robespierre also, and he was also guillotined. Then there was the rise of Napoleon. And Napoleon went about fighting with the all other rulers in Europe trying to create a French empire in Europe. So, Napoleonic wars, continuous warfare. And after that, by 1815, Napoleon was defeated. Then, there were 15 years of peace in France. Then, in 1830, again, there were revolutions, revolt against the monarchy. Then again, some time of peace, then in 1848 again there were revolution. That is why the 19th century in Europe has been called by historians as the century of revolutions. And revolution means bloodshed, violence. Then I also told you the example again after 1848-1871 there was Paris Commune uprising. So, continuously, this was the lifespan of Com, that 1798 to 1857, all right, till 1857, there were so many violent upheavals in France and generally in Europe. So, that is the type of society he lived in. And also, there was widespread poverty. You may remember I mentioned this point on the, in the first lecture that when, you know, in early 19th century in France, if a worker, this is what is Heel Bronner, an economist, estimate that if he worked around the year, he would get 500 francs as wages. But even for a family of three to stay alive, they needed 900 francs. So, women and children also had to work and in a very atrocious conditions at very low wages. 
so there was widespread poverty also so this was the kind of society that comte was living in that had an impact on his mind that how to reconstruct society as i told you that he had lost the faith in religion so religion was no longer capable of providing the answer and it was not only comte the young generation of comte's time generally became irreligious in france so the question that was there in the minds of the people was how to reconstruct society how to make a better society this is evident from the title of that pamphlet that plan of scientific operations for reconstruction of society for social reconstruction so that was the constant worry on his mind how to make society livable how to make it harmonious and peaceful because of the social condition and as far as the intellectual conditions are concerned the influences which shaped comte's thinking one as i told you that when he worked for 7 years with saint simo so this was the time he made a detailed study of enlightenment thought particularly in france he was influenced by rousseau turgot t u r g o t turgot condorcet t u n d o r T E T Condorcet and Montesquieu, M O N T E S Q U I E U, Q U I E U Mon for Montesquieu. These are important Enlightenment philosophers of France. So he was influenced by their idea, and at the same time he was also influenced by Saint Simon. who was to be his boss and senior colleague so this these are the intellectual influences and you will see the effect of all this in his ideas now in the course of the book the course of positive philosophy he begins with what he calls the law of three stages See, when we are saying the law of three stages, it is not a law like a scientific law. What is a scientific law? That you conduct research, test a hypothesis, and when the hypothesis is repeatedly proved, then you arrive at a generalization in the form of law. It is not a law like that. He just called it the law. Actually, it consists of a large number of his assumptions. about society all right so it will form the basis of his perspective his view of the subject matter and also his methodology they all originate out of this what he called the law of three stages and in this law of three stages you can also see the, the influence of both enlightenment as well as counter enlightenment because counter enlightenment scholars were also mainly french joseph de maistre and louis de bonald now how what is law of three stages first thing he says human society is progressing this idea of progress comes directly from enlightenment thought 
Enlightenment thinkers were the ones who were, when reflecting on the changes happening in their society, they used the concept of progress. So he adopted that idea that mankind is progressing, human society is progressing. One. Second, that this progress is an orderly process. Orderly process means it follows a definite pattern. It is not randomly anything happening. Rather, it follows a well-defined pattern. All right. And therefore, society passes through definite stages. There are definite stages through which the society passes. So, he says there are three stages. First stage he called theological stage. The first stage is theological stage. He said this is like childhood in man. Compared, illustrated this point, his view by linking it to childhood. What are the characteristics of childhood? Child is highly dependent. Child cannot independently handle all the problems of life. He depends on others, elders. And because of this dependence, he develops a larger than life view of the elder. For a five year old boy, his father is a great hero. So he looks at the elders on whom he is dependent in larger than life form. As children only you need heroes like Spider-Man, Batman, all that, because that's a time you think in terms of heroes, superhuman agency. So the same way when a society is characterized by very simple technology and therefore it does not have control over nature. So it tends to believe in supernatural forces. Religion develops. Religion constitutes the dominant form of knowledge. Theology means knowledge of religion, God. So this is the theological state where all ideas are predominantly religious ideas. Every aspect of life is seen as religion. As our Prime Minister said when he went to contest the election, Na to main aaya hu, na kisi ne bheja hai, mujhe maa ganga ne bulaya hai. Actually, it's just flowing river. It becomes maa ganga, goddess. All right. So, I have seen, you know, traveling in the train, when the train is about to pass over a river on the bridge, many people, they take out money from their purse and throw it into the river. So, river is seen in religious form. Rain is seen in religious form. They say it is Lord Indra's doing. All right. So, everything is conceived in religious terms. If you get smallpox, they say it is mother goddess's job. So, health, uh, natural phenomena like water, river, rain, even wind, fire, God, sun is also considered a god. You perform the Surya Namaskar in the morning. So, everything is conceived in religious terms. 
you don't say it is hydrogen helium uh, fireball made up of hydrogen and helium that's what science says about sun but for them it is a god so the entire society entire physical reality environment everything is conceived in religious term so this is the society where religious leaders control the society even if you have a king the king is seen as having religious powers and such a society is governed with a militaristic discipline this is the initial stage the earliest stage of human society according to com now this society changes now what is it that makes it change he says the prime stimulus for change comes because of population population when population grows that exerts pressure on the society for change as population increases society has to be reorganized the division of labor in society has to change what is division of labor how different tasks are allocated to people how different tasks are performed that has to change suppose there is a small family of four five people so you have the lady of the house she'll be performing so many tasks housekeeping cooking you know attending to the guests and so on but suppose suddenly 100 guests arrive then that family cannot manage the situation so they'll have to restructure the whole thing rope in people somebody to buy only vegetables somebody to only cook one recipe another person to cook another recipe somebody to only serve the people like that so the whole arrangement has to undergo change with the growth of population i am giving you a very simple example to help you understand so that is his idea that over a time when there is increase in population that leads to change in division of labor dol division of labor now he says however this change is not a smooth process that when population increases it makes new demands on the existing society and the existing social order cannot meet those demands initially and therefore chaos results conflict and disorganization develop the initial phases of conflict so he says the society moves through two phases organic that is the phase before the growth of population that is the time there is perfect interdependence between the parts and the society exists in a harmonious way that is when the family has only five people and they are living all by themselves very comfortably with the existing arrangement then as the population grows beyond a certain level 
and that increasing population makes new demands on society so disorganization results so society moves from organic phase to critical phase society changes from organic phase to critical phase that means conflict and disorganization result now no society can survive in a state of conflict so conflict has to be resolved and therefore society has to be reorganized and therefore we move to the next organic phase all right but by this time it is not the same society anymore because society has been restructured so society moves to the next stage that is metaphysical stage society moves from theological to metaphysical stage i repeat that initially the society is an organic phase peace and harmony prevails then because of the growth of population which makes new demands critical phase develop conflict and disorganization develop that conflict has to be resolved by restructuring the division of labor to bring about the next organic phase but in the meanwhile the society stands transformed from theological to metaphysical clear now what is metaphysical he says by now metaphysical is like adolescence in human being adolescence theological was like childhood metaphysical stage is like adolescence so the religious ideas come to be rejected because the religious ideas can no longer help in understanding the complex situation of conflict and disorganization so religious ideas will start losing their appeal and they are replaced by abstract philosophy the idea of essence and ideals ideal states are conceived and religious practices are replaced by secular law and the state which makes and enforces the law that takes over the role of the priest and the kings comparing it with europe he said <coughs> <coughs> till 1200 ad europe was in theological state from 1300 to 1800 was the metaphysical state this is the age of philosophy enlightenment thought represents the peak of metaphysical state where enlightenment thought became secular ideology secular ideas religion came to be rejected because it is like adolescence in which people question everything as i was giving you the example that for a 5 year old father is a hero for an 18 year old father is no more the hero he is an outdated person so the reason logic abstract reasoning that develops and therefore he says mathematics comes into existence what is mathematics use of abstract reason only logical thinking mathematics teaches you logical thinking so it is application of reason so the abstract philosophy based on reason comes to dominate so the knowledge that develops is starts to develop is mathematics now mathematics is abstract reason this calls for evidence and proof so
so once again as population increases this organic phase of the metaphysical stage that changes into critical phase again conflict and disorganization once again develop he says my time the time in which comte was living that represented this critical phase we have just crossed the metaphysical stage and we are in the critical phase now the abstract knowledge by itself is not able to solve problems so we need new kind of knowledge positive knowledge positive knowledge so the third stage that arrives is positivism theological metaphysical and positive or positivistic so he says now we are advancing towards positivistic stage and we are in the critical phase that's why he said there is conflict and disorganization in our society so we need to create new knowledge that will help us reorganize society so that once again we reach the organic phase all right and that knowledge should be positive knowledge and that is what has happened also he says that with mathematics began in the metaphysical state this was followed gradually as we were advancing further by astronomy then physics then chemistry then biology and now social sciences all knowledge has to be positive now because now we are in the positivistic state the essence of positive knowledge is that reason is connected with research research means real experience isn't it the observation of facts that is like adulthood in adulthood people don't think in terms of abstract ideals they become practical on the basis of real experience that is the characteristic of majority so the positivism is like adulthood in man where all knowledge has to be backed by research evidence facts here it is speculative reason but no research here reason is now disciplined by research so in every field the knowledge that we need has to be no positive knowledge that means where reason and research are combined and we need a knowledge about human society because human society is in the critical phase of disorganization and this society can be rectified reconstructed using the new knowledge religious knowledge philosophical knowledge are all outdated they are irrelevant they cannot help us in coping with this situation so we need scientific knowledge which he meant positive philosophy or positive knowledge that is how he built a case in favor of sociology as a science did you understand that now he is actually talking about the transformation in society but he is using the type of knowledge that exists as an index society that this is a simple society with very simple technology so the knowledge is religious that's why he defines it as theological state so knowledge is used as an index to define that state this is industrial society capitalist industrial society where all knowledge is positive knowledge first positive knowledge developed in physical and natural world because physical and natural world is a simple world simpler the reality 
easier it is to develop a positive knowledge about it. Human society is the most complex of all reality. So, knowledge about human society will come in the end. That is why sociology is a late comer. But it is the most difficult science to develop. And so he called it the queen of all sciences. It's like a mama saying, my baby is the prettiest. So sociology was Comte's baby. He said Comte is, sociology is the queen of all sciences, the greatest science of all. It's too cold. Eight minute I बेटा ये एसी बंद कर दो बहुत ठंडा हो गया ऑल राइट सो दिस इज हाउ दिस इज हिज लॉ ऑफ थ्री स्टेजेस सो आउट ऑफ दिस लॉ ऑफ थ्री स्टेजेस कम्स हिज पर्सपेक्टिव वन ही सेज ह्यूमन सोसाइटी इज प्रोग्रेसिंग दैट इज हिज बेसिक एजम्पन देन सेकेंड थिंग ही सेज इनडायरेक्टली ही डिड नॉट से इट वेरी डायरेक्टली ही सेज Society is like an organism. That's why he called talks about the organic stage. That the natural stage of society is organic stage. Society is comparable or similar to an organism. And the social reality is made up of social facts. Because this reality is observable, because we need to create a positive science of society. So, this reality can be known by observation. And with the help of this, we should try to arrive at generalization laws about society. So, these are his basic assumptions or perspective. And based on that, he says, again as mentioned in this law there are two sides to social life stability peace and harmony one conflict and change that's why he talks about society alternating between two phases organic critical organic critical so there is stability peace and harmony and there is also conflict and change So that constitutes the subject matter of sociology. He called it social statics and social dynamics. The subject matter of sociology includes discovering the laws which govern social statics and social dynamics. Laws of social statics tell us how stability and peace result. Laws of social dynamics tell us how change results in society. Yes, he says the subject matter of sociology consists of two branches of inquiry. One, we have to discover the laws which will explain how stability and harmony results. That branch of sociology would be called social statics. You can see the influence of physics here. The term statics and dynamics are used in physics. So he calls it social statics. Then another object issue of inquiry or another thing that we have to inquire about is how change results in society. That branch of sociology would be called social dynamics. So, we have to discover the laws that will explain how change results. And once we have both the type of laws, then in the positivistic stage, we can achieve the stage of order and progress then we will not experience the critical stage anymore. 
because we have the knowledge and with the help of knowledge we will prevent conflict and disorganization and we will be able to achieve orderly progress that means progress and yet peace and harmony maintained all right that is his proof the of argument that human society is progressing we are heading for better times so once we have this knowledge of sociology social statics and social dynamics we would be able to create a society of our own choice we will be able to prevent the critical stage in future now so this is his view of the subject matter clear then his view of methodology as he said that it has to be a positive science it has to be a positive science that means we have to base our knowledge on observation so first step in scientific method is observation here he admitted that experimentation is not possible in sociology experiment what is experimentation observation under controlled condition so he says experimentation is not possible an indirect experiment at the best we can do like in biology we try to understand the normal functioning by comparing the diseased organism with the non diseased organism when we compare them and see the presence of factors so we get an idea what are the characteristics of normal and what are the characteristics of pathological form same way he says social conflict or social disorganization that is like pathological form that's like disease so compare that with peace and harmony and identify the additional factors that are there in the society which has the which is in a disease state or lack of factors something which is needed is not there so there may be conflict and disorganization or some additional factor may have entered because of which there is conflict and disorganization so by this comparison you can have an indirect experiment conducted otherwise direct experiment which is there in physics chemistry and biology is not possible in sociology then next step is comparison by repeated comparison of research finding we try to arrive at a generalization then comparison also can be used for social dynamics that we compare the institutions of present with the societies of the past and on the basis of that we identify how past has changed into the present this is what he called historical method all that he meant here was we have to rely on historical data otherwise it is no different from scientific method and the final step in scientific method that is to be applied is generalization that we have to discover laws so he believed that laws can be discovered and therefore indirectly it means he believed that social reality behaves in a patterned way because only when there is a pattern in reality a generalization is possible so this is all he talked about from our point of view in his book 
the course of positive philosophy. Then, as I told you, later on, he started criticizing reason. That in spite of all the importance he gave to scientific method, which is based on reason and research, he said reason alone is not enough. In fact, emotions were of utmost importance in human life. that it is love and not the reason that was the basic principle of social life. Social life becomes possible not because of reason, primarily it is because of love, attachment, care for each other, altruism. He says reason tends to create egoism, selfishness, individualism. And that is why he even rejected the idea that society is made up of individuals. Society is made up of collectivities. And the smallest unit of society is family, not an individual. Individual cannot exist without a family. Individual comes into existence in a family and survives because of family. So family is the basic unit. Reason cannot satisfy all the human needs. In fact, he went on to say that the essential principle of modern anarchy is rooted in Raising of reason against sentiment. I repeat, essential principle of modern anarchy is rooted in raising of reason against sentiments of love. Because as I said, Reason creates individualism, selfishness, egoism. And today, today means in his time, Europe was in a state of anarchy, conflict, violence and all that. He says this is because we have given more importance to reason and given more importance to therefore egoism and individualism or selfishness. That is what is leading to all the chaos. <laughs> yeah, he in his second work, that is why he became an object of ridicule. But what he was saying was a fact to some extent. In the earlier work, he overemphasized on science and scientific method. Now he was giving a kind of corrective, but in the process rejecting the scientific method. And that is why as you will see the consequences when I complete the lecture, you will know. So, he says, social cohesion, that means peace and harmony in society, social cohesion can be achieved by encouraging altruism, that we should all think of our fellow beings. To cultivate altruism, we have to create a new religion of humanity. To cultivate altruism, we should have, we have to create a new religion of humanity. Because Christianity as a religion has failed. So, this religion would he called as positive religion. So, what we need to do is to create a positive religion.
पॉजिटिव रिलीजन वुड बी बेस्ड ऑन वॉट ही कॉल्ड टेरेस्ट्रियल मोरलिटी टीई आर आर ई एस टी आर आई ए एल टेरेस्ट्रियल टेरेस्ट्रियल मीन्स अर्थली दिस वर्ल्डली दैट मीन्स सेक्युलर मोरलिटी इज द ट्रेडिशनल रिलीजियस मोरलिटी यू अंडरस्टैंड मोरलिटी दैट रिलीजियस रूल्स वॉट यू शुड डू वॉट यू शुड नॉट डू द डूज एंड डोंट that is what is called the morality so he says that religious morality of christianity is outdated we need to create a new morality a secular morality based on scientific knowledge that is what he called terrestrial morality and actually he went on to create new rituals every religion has rituals no that some practices have to be done to propitiate the god for example hindus they give a bath to god offer food to god light a lamp and praise the god these are rituals so every religion has rituals so he said he tried to create new religion new rituals for positive religion rituals associated with baptism with marriage with death these are important events when religious rituals are performed so he created new type of rituals then he also created a calendar of to commemorate secular saints see in religion there are saints in christianity there are saints like mother teresa has was conferred the sainthood so saints are worshiped so he created a calendar consisting of secular saints like aristotle caesar newton shakespeare these are secular saints so the positive religion will involve celebration of the secular saints worship of the secular saints and then he said something which was ahead of his time he said in this because emotions are very important reason alone cannot give meaning and happiness to life it has to be supplemented with emotion and while positive philosophers would be dominated by reason so they need somebody to support them and that would be women women embody emotions and workers represent activity so workers and women should also be liberated they would become the auxiliaries or supporters of positive philosopher so only when there is freedom and equality for women and workers that peace and harmony can result that he said that positive philosophers epitomize reason reason by itself is inadequate so they need auxiliaries auxiliaries means supporters who provide a support so they need auxiliaries and the auxiliaries would be women women who are embodiment of emotion and love and workers who represent physical activity so workers and women should be given equality should be liberated only then the society can have peace and harmony he said male reason leads to all kind of machinations and women were best suited to unify the fragmented modern society so women should be given a central role 
these are his views about positive religion so along with positive science there must also be positive religion that is what he was saying but because of all this he lost the respect among you know the intelligentsia the scholars the intellectuals earlier book created a great deal of respect among the intelligentsia but this second work the system of positive politics that made him uh, you know object of ridicule they said he is trying to be the second christ founder of a new religion and therefore positivism became a term of disrepute positivism they said it is all humbug it is just some kind of godmen and religious activity it is not science and therefore positivism came to be rejected in france so although it is believed that he was personally contented after his relationship with the lady second lady but intellectually and in terms of his career it was destroyed so much so that after some time somebody writing a dissertation for doctoral research made a reference to comte the university rejected that thesis simply because it talked about comte and the term sociology became a term of disrepute in france it took another 75 years for france to revive sociology to formally accept sociology as a science so this is about august comte now if you have any questions you can tell me he was the women's liberation yes there he was ahead of his time as far as the questions are concerned as i told you that directly they would they have not asked a question on his methodology or something there have been there has been only one question that has been a short note on positive religion according to comte that is all they have asked but basic familiarity with comte is important later on we'll talk about emil durkheim it was emil durkheim also a french sociologist who has been called an uneasy comtean he was quintessentially comtean he followed comte's method but he always denied that he was a positivist because the term positivism had come under disrepute now in the case of comte we find that his contribution was only limited to these three steps he never applied the positive science method that is also a major criticism of comte that he laid the basic foundation presented a perspective a subject matter and also suggested a methodology so you don't have any questions all right the reading for this is from the study material that has been given to you you have to read
पेज फोर्टी फोर टू पेज फोर्टी एट यू डोट टू रीड मोर ऑन दैट क्लास लेक्चर एंड दैट टूगेदर वुड मोर देन सफाइट ऑल राइट